Okay, we're um, we're trying something a little bit different. Yeah. We're in the basement. This isn't just any basement, though. What? This isn't just any basement. Though. It isn't just any basement. It's also our library, mm -hmm. and um, there should be less background noise. There is a dehumidifier running in the utility room, but we closed the door temporarily. Um, and of course, we are actually under a. Uh, the ceiling, which is the floor of the kitchen, kitchen and, and family room. And uh, if the kids run around up there, it will sound like... It sucks to be you. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry I didn't hear it. It will sound like we're inside a giant drum. Um, but, uh, okay. But here we are. It's here like... we are. We're also farther away from the mics. Yeah. I have, I've propped up my little handheld recorder... I actually sold my old multi-track recorder with the plan to use the proceeds towards a somewhat more expensive, nicer one. And guess what happened? <laughs> Any guesses? Any all, one? all that money went into other urgent things and um, never made up the difference. And so... Here we are. Uh, we're, uh, this is the only recorder I have. Fortunately, I have three of them <laughs> oh, that's always nice to have a backup so if here. one of these little this is an olympus ls10 it's an old digital recorder but i've kept it all these years because it sounds really good for mm -hmm. its price point you know yeah um, yeah i still have a very nice sony um pcm d1 which originally back in the day cost like a couple grand i mean i, I got it used but it, and it has a titanium shell and it was like a very advanced recorder and has fantastic sound except that mine is not working right and it is impossible to repair or and sony will no longer repair them no longer support and repair it yeah so yeah i really should i don't know give it away or sell it as for for parts on ebay but it's such a perfect object it's just this, it's this gorgeous design. It's this titanium case. It's very, very much like Apple's um, PowerBook G4 from around 99 or 2000, which was oh, yeah. mm -hmm. just this uh, lovely, A lovely laptop tool. design. Oh, yeah, one of my favorites that mm -hmm. I've ever owned. Anyway, I'm bad luck. Waxing poetic about your tools. About the past. Um, yeah. As, as one is prone to do. As I can't really put much into the present uh, oh. as far as our studio tools. Yeah, um, there's that. We do have another thing I want to try in the near future, which is use an iPhone and use those wireless lapel mics. Oh, we should try that. Yeah. It might be nice. But um, I'll, I'll need to test. I haven't tested that approach yet. Yeah. So we, we used it. It did work for recording a video. But I haven't tried it with like an audio only recording app or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we have this just propped up on a table on some books and to raise it the last little bit of the way. I finally found a use for my copy of David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest. <laughs> <laughs> we knew there was one. Yeah. Of now, that much we were certain. Don't get me wrong. I actually really love David Foster Wallace's essays and short stories, but I have never made it all the way through one of his novels. Um, uh, and I may never. It's such it's a... It's okay, life's short, you know? You it's gotta, just such a huge commitment. And, and you got to pick your commitment. you got to pick your battles. Well, I'm, I'm learning this, that I'm like, I, I feel... I don't want to be melodramatic. I feel the years of my life waning, <laughs> you know, kind of acutely now, yeah. given our health issues, given my health issues, yeah, and our ongoing health challenges, and um, so I am trying to be more selective about picking my battles as to what I read. Um, I, I have all these books I collected, these like um, first edition of Gene Wolfe novels, and I've always thought that I would read them eventually, but now I'm like, I better not wait. <laughs> yeah, don't wait. Just read them. I, I'm not. 
I don't, uh, I shouldn't be like saving these for when I have some imagined future of retirement and the luxurious amounts of time, right? Right. So it may never arrive. It may never arrive, and I don't want to feel bitter about all the things I never, never actually got to. got to do, like finishing all Gene Wolfe's novels. Yeah. No. It's never good to carry that kind of stuff with you. Anyway. So, um, so we actually recorded on this topic in the car briefly, but the conversation was rough and muddled and it didn't go great. Um, so... I wanted to talk about a way that we found to try to take the family to see a film in a theater. And yes. th this is something we have not done. Since since before 2020, actually. We had to, like, even, like, we hadn't gone to the movies as a family for a bit, even when 2020 started. Right. Now, the last thing I s sort of snuck in was in early March, we snuck into a, um, uh, to see, um, Akhenaten. Not Akhenaten. Oh, that was February. That was, that was a poor game, Bess. No, even later. Even later than that. Yeah, we saw the, what is the, oh, the yes. Roman, the Roman Empress. Um, not Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with people when I say like Agrippa, but that's not Agrippina. Agrippina. We saw the the Met streaming production of Agrippina. Yeah. And that was the last thing we have seen in a theater. Oh, we went separately. Like, that's the reason I'm remembering it differently. Because like you went on your own, and I went with Robert during the day. Oh, like, that's I, right. That's so we right. like we chose two different off times. Yeah, we because we knew that the pandemic was. Underway. Starting to pose a risk in public places. Yeah, so these were, um, it was like, it was not live streaming, it was an encore recorded presentation yes. or yes. something at theaters. Uh, this is was actually... A new thing they were doing, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, and then um, very shortly after this, after... March 13th, which mm -hmm. was like D-Day for the pandemic. Well, you know? for our pandemic. Well, for the country, honestly. Oh, was it really? Okay. An awful lot of things just shut down abruptly that Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the Shortly after that, the Met started streaming operas for free every weekend. Yeah, you know, Every nice. day, actually. Yeah, you could tune into an opera every day. For, that, for, for a while there, you could have an opera daily. Yeah. It was kind of an exciting and moment in time. We watched quite a few, yeah. uh, but it... It is hard to get um, toddlers to appreciate <laughs> modern Final opera. points of Wagner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So, it's true. It's true. Right. Um, so we had to kind of stop. And then they gave that up. But that was actually, that was a wonderful moment for me. Yeah. I, I saw so many operas that I had never seen. Um, so, and, and certainly not staged as well as the Met. Well, sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. And. Um, yeah. And I think several of our children really did enjoy watching an opera. Several did, but some... Some were just not here for well, it. Well, they're just absolutely hostile. They didn't even want to hear it in the next room or from another room of the house. Sounds like a century issue, you know? <laughs> well, people do refer to the operatic style of singing sometimes is just screaming in tune, you know? Screaming in tune. <laughs> it, it is. It's not for I mean, everyone. It's, it's not for everyone. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of, of uh, soprano singers. I'm just not. Sopranos. Yeah, I'm just yeah. not. Uh, it's it's just too screamy. Yeah. It's too screamy. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I and I don't feel like that's um, what do you call it? There's a lot of misogyny attached when people like talk about sopranos. High voices. High voices. Yeah. Um, no, altos are amazing. It's more like this the style of melodic singing that they they do for soprano parts. Yeah, and, this, this the style of music. It's just not my jam. Yeah. Not my jam. But, well, anyway, we so for various reasons, well, first of all, we should say that it was already a huge and difficult production to take the entire family to a film. And expensive. Well, that's... Huge, that's, difficult, expensive, just... Yeah, that's part of it. Like, so, and very costly to buy nine tickets. Yes. And um, even for a matinee. And, You're a matinee. 
You can hear the stomping around upstairs. They're actually walking normally, but it sounds very it's, loud down here. It sounds like some weird thing you're doing down They're just yeah, walking around. Yeah. They're not doing any unusual thing. Um, and trying to keep the younger kids occupied in the theater, even if it's a movie, like, like we, we went to animated films several times, even if it's a movie like a Miyazaki film that we thought they would love, and they even if they are watching it and are interested, they will watch it and be interested in it while climbing all over the seats, hanging upside down from the railings, you know, tipping over the railings onto the floor. Do a little know, dance, like running back and forth. Running back and forth, running some in sitting place. in their seat, like upside down with their feet sticking up in the air, you know. it's Running, jumping in place. And just to be clear... <laughs> This is not just our kids being weird. This is normal, healthy toddler behavior. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're not talking about like eight-year-olds. Like, right. You know, this is normal. Three, a three-year-old. This normal, is a- expected, healthy toddler behaviors. And what's what's abnormal is is like tr- <laughs> brutally training toddlers to sit perfectly still, still in all places and all times. They're just not wired for that. Yeah. No, they are not. Well, some are actually. I mean, the, they're outliers and everything. Yeah, yeah, All things have yeah. outliers. But but most uh, toddlers cannot, you, sh- you should not expect them to sit still for We that had long. a pretty good time. I took a lot of them, well, now mind you, I was pregnant with Malachi. Mm-hmm. I took a lot of them to see the Transformers movie in the theater by myself to a matinee. This, was, this, was, this was years ago. This, this was, was the King Arthur, not the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, the name. But. We, had, we had a great time. It was very fun. And, um, Dumb movie, but fun. Oh, well, you know, yeah. um, I wouldn't necessarily call it that. Call it that, but okay. I would say that it was a a movie for kids, a, a movie, movie made for kids. for kids, yeah, and with enough background jokes for their adults to to not be totally bored, not be totally bored by watch watching it. Right. So yeah. no, it's it's a perfectly fine movie <clears throat> on, its, on its own merits for what it is, and um, a lot of adults I know that are transformer for fan, transformer fans enjoyed it heartily. Um, it's like being a brony. <laughs> hey, some people are. Some people are. Right. And um, yes, no, we had a great time. Eleanor was a busy little two-year-old, not not quite two-year-old mm-hmm. at the time, but was young enough that she would maybe sit with me for a while and cuddle. Yeah. Um, Billy was still very little. He was like yeah. five. Yeah. You know, so... Um, yeah, he was so he was about, almost five. She was like four or five years old, and um, and he was doing his like little shifting in his seat and kind of had right. to get up and walk back and forth a little bit. So we had this very lightly attended matinee that we it was fine. It was yeah. not a big deal. But yes, no one was coming over to complain about the kids. No, no, it was. Um, yeah, and it was a fun kid to move. I think there was like one or two other families there. And it was like a Tuesday. I had taken to also occasionally. Um, I would keep an eye on these special, like, limited run um, Fathom events, showings of Miyazaki mm-hmm. films and other films that were just only going to be there for one show, mm-hmm. one night, right. usually a, a weeknight late showing. Mm-hmm. And I would just tell the kids, hey, everyone into the car, we're going to see a movie. <laughs> and right. um, I took them to see... Uh, 2000, the older kids, to see, a, a like, a late showing of, of the original like restored print 2001 a space odyssey which oh yeah i wanted them to have that experience we also took them to see uh not the babies but we took most of them to see an anime film called um called your name Mm -hmm. which is totally a big sensory picture wow it's very wild story it's it's, it's over the top so they really love that was i I don't but, know if you were there or not. I can't, I've, I know I've seen the movie. I don't know if I saw it in the theater with you or not. Maybe not, because we may have decided... To leave a, a baby home. Leave and the babies the baby. at yeah. home. Yeah. Hard to say. But, but, um, but yeah, yeah, and I've, I really have wanted to continue that, take, to like t- taking people to the occasional late showings of artier films. And they keep doing, like... There's, like, a Miyazaki festival where they do single showings annually of... And I really wanted to get everyone to see Nausicaa um, oh yeah which is my favorite Miyazaki film mm-hmm. um, but uh, 
it was not to be. And then, so I personally, I can't even describe how much I love attending art films in a traditional darkened theater. You know, it's mm -hmm. just a, it's such an, was such an important part of my youth, you know, um, mm -hmm. when I both, when I was in college, we had two films every week on campus, including a, a whole huge slate of art films that from all over the world, you know, and all over the eras, the, 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 mm -hmm. the different, you know, and that was just hugely influential on me. And then um, I continued that. I used to see cool films at the Michigan Theater when I moved to Ann Arbor, um, including what I'm going to talk about at some point, which is um, a film that is 100% absolutely not for everyone, not of interest to everyone, but... Um, a very uncompromising art film called Prospero's Books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, um, no, I've not seen it, but I know it's... Yeah. yeah. But just fascinated me at the time. Um, mm -hmm. ton of cool films. And some not so good, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, I used to so go me. to the Ann Arbor, art, uh, uh, Ann Arbor Film Festival, like, public showings, mm -hmm. um, where you just see stuff that was entered... You just Good see idea. basically a raw reel of, you know, of a dozen shorts. Mm -hmm. Some good, some like, what the hell was that? Well, yeah. <laughs> right? What did I just watch? Some, some really good. Some really know? good. Yeah. It was just a total mixed bag and you never knew what you were going to get. And that was really fun. Anyway, blathering because I'm lonely and I like to talk to people. Yes. Um, but uh, we, it's been a... a all this is by way of saying... It's been a long time since we've been to the theater. And and, and we've really missed it. I've really missed we've it. Really missed and it. we have been getting, accumulating, all you know, whatever budget we would have spent on going to see films in theaters, we've been gradually over the years accumulating quite a, a library of film, including uh, I have a lot of Criterion editions that I've been picking yes. up over the years when they're on sale. <laughs> Yeah, you know, many of the classics. Yeah, and so, um, so, but it's just not the same. Not the same. And you know, we have the kids are not deprived of their doses of Marvel Cinematic Universe, Marvel, yeah. <laughs> Marvel movies, which they insist on seeing every single one. Yeah, and so we the good, the bad, the other. we own every single one. And yeah, recently, I wanted to weed the collection. And go through them with the kids and say, I'd like to keep, like, the top ten. Can we get rid of, like, 25 of these? <laughs> Just give them away. And you got some really difficult looks, like... Total pushback. No, yeah. we have to have the... No, the whole collection. Because they have to be able to binge the whole thing. The whole thing, thing. Like, yeah. oh, God. Just don't make me watch... You're going to watch all the all Avengers movies. Them. Okay. You're going to watch all the yeah. Black Panther movies. Okay. You're yeah. going to watch all the yeah. whatever yeah. movies. They're, 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 don't get me wrong. Some of them I really enjoyed. A lot of them are mediocre, and some of them are just like baffling. Come on, this is like you know, the second Doctor Strange movie was like it's terrible. Bad. It's actually terrible. bad. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, like, really, apparently some kind of vendetta or something. And we haven't seen it yet, but I hear the third Ant Man movie was pretty damn awful as well. Mm -hmm. so. The that trailer looks like dog shit. I have to say, <laughs> that'll just, happen. Just yeah. CGI dog shit. Everyone came in for one day and shot their scenes in the front they, of a green screen. They scraped together a movie. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, you know what? We, we've seen some DC, too. We saw the, the Shazam movies, which I, which I thought were great fun. The Shazam movies, the I, first one, I really enjoyed. I think it's great. I've seen it more than once. It's worth rewatching. It. The, let me just offer a trigger warning for adoption, though. That may not be... Um, you know, if there's... There are a lot of strong adoption themes that may be hard to watch, depending on your family. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. and it's for both of them, honestly. Yeah. But um, but other than that, just really a good, fun time, more or less, for both movies. Yeah. Um, the one I want to see that I saw a trailer for is Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle? Yeah. Wow, well, how have Beetle. I not even heard of this film? It sounds like it's probably not going to be very good, but I think the action <laughs> scenes are going to slap. Yeah, well, you know... I'm a fan of kung fu films. I am not above watching a dumb as hell movie just because it has amazing action sequences. Yes, that that's something that can I be mean, really great. One of the things we've done 
I mean, I own every Zatoichi film in a box set, right? <laughs> the Blind Swordsman. Yes. And one of the things we've done, we've seen with the Criterion Channel subscription online, is is um, we've watched a lot of Jackie Chan's less famous films. Less famous films. And they're and less famous for a reason. They're less famous for many good reasons, but even so, they often have the funnest, the, the most fun fight scenes. You know? They are very fun. Yeah. In spite of that, in spite of yeah. like it in being a bad of movie, the deep the profound <laughs> racism and stupidity. And yes. <laughs> All that aside, the yeah. action scenes are fun, and it's Jackie Chan. Yeah. And if you enjoy Jackie Chan, you can enjoy these movies. Yeah. The um, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm I'm here for Blue Beetle. Um, I like to, I'm looking forward to the action scenes. The kids are actually getting an education. Because of the depth, the range of films that we watch, the kids are getting a bit of an education in screenwriting. Yeah. What makes a good screenplay and a bad screenplay? A good story, a tight story. Yeah, and also visual storytelling, like mm -hmm. how is this shot, what does this shot say symbolically? Right. Yeah. Actually, that piece Joshua had last night about um, Breaking the Ice, yeah. I, I'd always thought of it as this sort of like, other, this other symbolism about, but knowing the story of the relationship when I started watching it even the first time, yes, I can only see it as symbolism about a broken relationship. Mm -hmm. Whereas with his naive eyes, mm -hmm. that's symbolism for, for the two of them breaking the eyes. We watched. Um, I, and I'm, not, I'm sorry if I'm offering spoilers, but the movie is almost 20 years old. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to talk briefly about... Um, we watched a film last night. We we replace this with Friday movie nights. Every Friday night we get popcorn. And, Saturday. I'm sorry. Saturday movie nights. <laughs> what day is it even? Today's Sunday. I don't even know where I am. What's my name? Who are you again? I'm your the, wife. The, You're okay. safe here. <laughs> I'm safe here. I don't feel safe. The, uh, the people tromping around up above, who knows what they're up to. Um, could be anything. Could be anything. Um, we we watched a film that I watched in the '90s in the theater and haven't seen since, which I. Was it the 90s? Oh my God. I think it was early 2000. Uh, Go on. You, you look it up. Yeah. I'm sorry, you look it up. I could be wrong. Everything when you get older, everything seems like it is the same ten years age. Ago. That ten, was ten years ago. It's either ten years ago or it's thirty years, years ago. ago. Yeah, it was ten years ago. And last you, week. You like thirty years ago. You put it 50. in one of these boxes and you sort of don't keep a continuous like realistic memory of exactly when things happen. 2004. Okay, I'm yeah. wrong. It was 2004. Mm -hmm. I saw this film years ago and um, I, the kids are real fans of Jim Carrey. Um, Josh especially. Yeah. And we've seen most of his I guess 90s and 2000s films. All, all of the comedies at least. Mm -hmm. Um and I thought it was the natural progression to see him a little bit of his later work. We saw him in the Truman Show. The kids loved that. Film. Love the Truman Show. Yeah, which is a surprisingly complex film. So they are gaining a vocabulary and understanding of film mm -hmm. that lets them appreciate things that aren't just, you know, action hero fight scenes, right? Right. Um, last night we our theme was uh, Michael Gondry, and we watched two films. We watched um, a film called Be Kind, Rewind with Jack Black and Most Def, mm -hmm. um, which is they were great together, a right? funny, surreal film about a video store where due to a unlikely set of circumstances, all their... All their VHS tapes are erased. This is a uh, an inner city uh, in, s location in Passaic, New Jersey, a decrepit, you know, sort of crumbling city, right? Right. Uh, Rust Belt. Um, Rust Belt, crumbling city. Kind of city. And uh, the it's a video store which only has VHS tapes for rent for it's a one dollar each. One day. And, um, yeah, even when this was made, um, VHS tapes had, were largely phased out, so this was a holdover phased. even then. Even at that time, it was a holdover. Right. right. But, this, so, but it set up the plot, which is Jack Black and most deaf 
decided uh, that they had to... Okay, so the owner of the store was away for a couple weeks, right? Right. While he was away... <laughs> Uh, it all went to hell. Uh, they got up to some mischief, which involved, after erasing all the tapes accidentally, um, mm -hmm. they got up to the task of uh, recreating the films themselves so that they actually could rent them to people. Yes, yeah, like 20-minute versions of the film. Yeah, so they had, uh, the first one they did, you know, someone had wanted to rent Ghostbusters, so they said, uh, come back at 4 o'clock, we'll have it ready for ready you, for me, right? and they they ran around and frantically Just with <laughs> zero budget <laughs> like no budget, they had like a they had, the, they had the blank Ghostbusters tape and a camcorder, and a camcorder that was it, and they re-recorded a, uh, a 20 minute remake of Ghostbusters, right, yeah anyway, and what of course the, the the funny thing about all this is that the people who started watching their remakes came back for more. They're like, "That was that was great. I really that's liked right. that." That's <laughs> that was, you got any more of that? Yes. 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 So it's the film is kind of sweet and ridiculous and funny. Um, yes. And surreal. Yeah, yeah. Ten for ten. Yeah, yeah, I recommend it. It's a good film. Yeah, a small, a very very low budget, very small film, but yeah. a lot of fun to watch. Anyway. Then this, that was Michael Gondry directed, and then um, the next one was also a Michael Gondry film. Is that right? Well, yeah. Was Eternal Sunshine? Let's I, I should describe this one since I've been talking so much. So Eternal Sunshine is this Jim Carrey movie, and I'll tell you right now, it's a little complicated to explain without a chart. Yeah. But uh, basically, this couple are going out, and they have this kind of. Uh, what would now be described as a toxic relationship, okay? And they, um, one day the girl breaks up with the guy and she goes to get this service where she has him erased from her memory. And he's bewildered. And That's kind of a fly-by-night, like... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like... <laughs> like you know, a it's a, neuroscience, neurosurgeon or something who runs this machine where... And they're like... And he's like, hey, so is this going to like give me brain damage or anything? He's like, well, technically, the procedure is brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> it's a form of brain right. damage. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, you sign your waivers. You sign your waivers, forms. you do the thing. <laughs> and the, the, so the deal is, she goes in, she gets him erased, and he's bewildered. And he's like, what happened? And one of the mutual friends says, look, I got this in the mail. She had you erased from your, her memory. I'm not supposed to mention you to her anymore. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? Yes. He's outraged, he's mad, and he decides, well, fine, fine, I'll have her erased from my memory. Right. And the whole movie is a story of that process that yeah. ex expiates the nature of their relationship when, when you're having, back to when they met. When you're having this procedure done, you're asleep. Yes. Um, you're hooked up to, I could call it like a squid, if you know that is, some, a squid. Yeah. Quantum semiconductor like uh, sensor thing. Yeah, on your around, head. On your head. Looks like a sleep study. Giant colander. <laughs> right. Yeah, it looks like a big sleep study. Right. Thing. right. And and you're being monitored on a screen, and you're reliving. This thing is triggering you to relive the memories, and then as you relive the specific memories that you would wanted to have erased. They go to that portion of your they brain. They go to that portion of the brain, and it doesn't show exactly how this is done, but like it like uses lasers and like you know vaporizes that. It uses magic brain. technology. Yeah, but the idea that you can see different parts of the brain being activated during dreaming. Oh, well, that's a thing. That's actually a thing, right. and so it's it's like barely plausible, right? Like really scarcely plausible. Yeah. But they really sell it with how. Um, Genuine, the fly by night. How fl just how fly by night it is. The people yes. they hired to do this, how to just how, do this on, off the cuff, irresponsible. They like break into your house after you've taken a sedative, like a strong sedative, and you're soundly asleep. Yeah. And they come do it while you're asleep, and they're gone before you wake up. So when you wake up, oh, they've, they've also they had you bring them all the memorabilia from your home, right? So that room. you don't find stuff later. That doesn't make sense. All the photos, everything else. You bring everything. All photos, all the mentors. Drawings, right? letters, you know. Etc. You bring that to them. <laughs> you bring that to them. They just they scan it, mark your brain, dispose of it, mm -hmm. and then 
calm and erase your memory while you sleep. So as far as you know, you go to sleep one night, you wake up the next morning with a hangover, with a hangover, and you have no memory of the person yeah. or whatever it is that you want erased. Right. And there's a very sad moment. There's a woman in the waiting room of the place. We see her there with her memorabilia, and it's a dog bowl and a leash and like this, all these photos all these of, photos of her beloved pet. Right. right. She's it's, it's so sad. So much of it is, it's very melancholy. Melancholy. It's, it's very well. melancholy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they retrace their relationship from the most recent fight to the meeting, yes. the night they met. Yeah. And during the procedure, Jim Carrey's character decides, wait a minute, I don't think I actually want to do this. Halfway through, he realizes. Like, he's like, I, I don't want to lose all these memories. lucid dream and at so, this point. And yeah. so um, a significant portion of the, video, of the video, of the movie, is he and his ex-girlfriend running around in his memory. Through his memories. Through his memories, while, trying to hide. While they're collapsing. And yes. dissolving. The memories are collapsing, dissolving, and he's trying to find some other memory to hide in until they finish the procedure. Hide his memory of her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they get so he can still remember her. Um But there's a scene. Now this is the this is the part that's really funny, right? And I'm gonna tell you this is the spoiler yeah. for like the big reveal of the movie. Yeah. The movie opens with the two of them meeting. Yes. But they're meeting after both of them have had their memory of each other erased. Already gone through the whole So they've thing. already had the relationship, they've had the breakup, <clears throat> they've had their memories erased, and they go back, they both show up on the same day, around the same time, at the beach where they met. They were still drawn to that place. Drawn to that place, yeah. on that day, at that time, and they meet each other again. And they start this, like, clearly... They don't have clear memories of having known each other before, but there must be enough memory trace left. Like, right, they, they don't... And actually... If you watch from the beginning naively, yeah. they appear to not know each other at all. They do yeah. not recognize each other. Right. They don't. They're just drawn to each other. Right. But they and they were drawn to the location. But they fall immediately back into the tracks of their relationship. Right. In, just instantaneously, yeah. they are back where they started, yeah. and it was a rocky relationship from the moment they met. Both times. Yes. <laughs> right. So it's really exactly the same. It's exactly they're, the they're same. Like, what do you say, chalk and cheese? You know, they're like butting heads with each other at the same time they're attracted to each other from yeah. from minute one. Minute one. I've never heard chalk and cheese, but yes. Yeah, they um, don't go well together. They don't go well together. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was true. They, they don't, but they seem to like each other for Flat, some reason. Fire and ice, I don't know. Yeah. So the scene we're referring to where Joshua had an astute observation is like day two after their second meeting when they don't know that they already know each other. Um, she says, hey, let's go up to the Charles It's Frozen Over. And the first time I watch the movie, and every time I watch the movie, it takes me aback, because this is a two... This is like... This is like a two, two-and-a-half-hour drive from where they oh, are. right, yeah, to Montauk. Like, yeah. From, from Montauk. Long Island... Montauk. Montauk. Yeah. Um, they're not in Montauk. They took the train out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they live, like, on Long Island or in New York somewhere, yeah. and they took the train out, and so this is like a two, two and a half hour drive for them to just go to Boston right. and go visit or, the Charles yeah. in the middle of the night. Right. And so... And they're not even... I don't even know exactly where they are. They're not in downtown No, they're not Boston. in Manhattan. It's not right. like yeah. No, they're in, yeah. No, no. Uh, and when they go to the Charles, it's... The Charles is a big river. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't go to downtown Boston. They don't go to Cambridge. But they yeah. just go up... They just drive up to the Boston area. Right. So they just like drove to Boston right. like a five hour round all, trip. They drive all night long. And drive all night. Yeah. yeah. So to that go they can do this stuff. Do this stuff. And so the scene is they drive up to the Charles, they come out of the ice and he's reticent and doesn't want to get out because maybe the ice isn't She wants solid. to have a picnic on the frozen river. Well not, not she didn't even say picnic. She just wants to go see it. Well she did say picnic originally. Oh but... this this is a different scene. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And um so they're gonna go because she just wants to walk on the frozen river. Okay. And thinks it's so great, it's so wonderful. He's like, is the, is the, are you sure? Is it really frozen? Maybe it's cracked. Maybe it's not all... Maybe it's thin. And he's got concerns. And she's like, no, let's go on the ice. It's great. And so he, she coaxes him out there. She falls down and, like, bruises herself. But they both go out and they lay on the ice together. Yes. And... They cut to a pan up. They cut to a pan up. Overhead shot. And after she's ex after she's carefully reassured him, the ice is completely safe. They pan up, and there's this huge, huge ass crack, crack. <laughs> like you know, this 
huge crack the size of a human body yes. next to them on the ice. Yes. And the viewer sees this, and Joshua's uh, observation was, oh, the two of them are breaking the ice. And our observation, like sort of knowing a summary of the movie is... They're breaking up. Yeah, they're breaking up. This relationship right. is broken from the outset. Right. right. And um, both of those things are true. Yeah. And they were revealed in the yeah. way that the, the scene was shot. Yeah. Uh, just a, really nicely done. Really yeah. nicely done. An- another, another great example we just saw recently is there are... Um, we watched AI, and there oh, are yeah. a lot of shots in that film. Yeah. Um, a joint effort between... Kubrick and Spielberg, Kubrick who had died and Spielberg who completed the film, yeah. but shooting many scenes in Kubrick's style yes. or using some of his favorite tricks. And at, at one point they sh- they shoot a scene at the dinner table through the, the what? through the light, light fixture, fixture mm-hmm. with the camera right way above pointing down at the dining table through the light fixture to put this huge like halo around around the uh, the robot character yes uh, just so, although it's not a halo it's a microscope the he's way you're under viewed. a microscope right, the he's way he's also viewed. he's also imprisoned in a, a like separate like his own mm-hmm. separate ring is separated from everyone else right yeah there's so much deliberate all these deliberate choices they shoot through this rippled glass door so he, he, he looks completely blurred you know mm-hmm. when you first see him enter the picture the the uh view is extremely out of focus and he looks this is actually steven spielberg making reference to his own film to our close encounters of the third Third kind when we first see the aliens at the end that are like brilliantly backlit and out of focus and Mm -hmm. they're they're just these extremely tall elongated spindly shapes right Mm -hmm. he got that exact same effect when they're seeing so the, the robot, oh, right. right. He see, literally looks like you're looking at an alien. An alien as you come through, yeah. as he, he's revealed. Well, it's so much, so many lovely little filmic details. Yes, and a long film. But it I, is a long I, film. But uh, I think, you know, worth the investment of time. Well, we, I, I kept thinking, oh, the kids aren't really getting in, getting it. Kids aren't really getting it. And then in the final, like, the um, coda of it, right. um, one, one of the child just burst into tears right it's like not in a bad way but like just the catharsis <laughs> when it hit was like a freight train like a freight train like everything had built up and like bam and she got it yes like that was worth it that was yeah no, 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 no not no i don't mean you know we really try to make our kids, kids cry, cry. <laughs> but, but no to really get to yes. viscerally get a film's meaning is really yes it's a wonderful thing it's, and wonderful it's, experience. it's one of the reasons i love film so much anyway this is all. <laughs> oh, so this is like a preamble. This is a preamble. One more, one more thing I want to say. So though, though we did this. I'm trying to do these theme nights. We're also, we take requests so the kids can pick out films. And if if we um, think that they have, honestly, well, two things. If we think they have any redeeming value at all, even a little. <laughs> I'm not and, sure what this is about. And, but don't, yeah. And um, it won't traumatize anyone too much to see them. That's. That's actually my that's, that's my the metric. Biggest one. Yeah. My biggest metric, and the and for right. me, it's the only metric. If we don't okay, think anyone's okay, going to be what? redeeming value is not, if they want to watch a dumb movie, I'm more than happy to order a copy. Of you whatever, use, you yeah. can get almost any DVD ever made on eBay for sometimes four three, bucks, three four bucks. Yeah, yeah. plus the, plus know. the shipping. Sometimes the shipping is more than the movie. Yeah, but yeah, so, no. The, the, so we so we've filled out our collection this way. No, the gate for me is like, can we put this on and not traumatize anyone in the house? Right. So this is going to so be some kind of yeah harm to somebody. So and if the answer is yes, well, I'm happy to watch it. You know, so certain it certain films were actually careful to give the younger kids something else to do in the other room. Yes. Oh yes, because some things are on that line. Yeah. Some things I, I don't think are, are just like what's the word? Yeah. Just traumatic. We only sh- stop. yeah we only showed The Shining to the two oldest kids yeah yeah <laughs> we felt it was for the best and they were laughing at it honestly. they were laughing the whole time so, so maybe we ate it too late <laughs> maybe but the um, uh, but no, if it's not going to harm anybody more cynical than, than more we cynical were when we first saw it apparently the 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 Michael Gondry thing was those two films he has more movies but those are the two we prepared 
Right. But this will then segue into another couple films because um, in um, Eternal Sunshine, did, I, did you give me it back? Where is it? What? Give me what back? The, deep, the disc. I didn't have the disc. Oh, I did. Uh, the uh, writer, the co. So Eternal Sunshine was uh, a project of uh, Michael Gondry and Charlie Kaufman. Charlie Kaufman, dire- Gondry was the director and Kaufman was the screenwriter. Mm-hmm. Kaufman is another fascinating figure who did, uh, right. who did uh, interesting films during this era. And so the next one, next week, mm-hmm. we're going to watch two Charlie Kaufman films. Uh-huh. The, the first one being, if we can fit them in, they're really long. Um, the first one being, um, being John Malkovich. Oh, yeah, yeah. They didn't see that. That's right. Just, yeah. And, and the second one, I don't know if they're ready for this. It's a difficult film. The second one is called Schenectady, New York. No, it's not called Schenectady. Schenectady. Oh, Schenectady. Schenectady. <laughs> it's not called Schenectady. That's the name of the actual city. No. <laughs> oh, no. we're recording. We're recording, Rocket. It's, um, okay. The city, I'm sorry. You're right. Well, I got it halfway. All right. I said it halfway. The city is Schenectady. Yes, the name of the city. The word I'm looking for is Schenectady, and I wound up saying Schenectady. Yes. So you were trying. Uh, an attempt was made. An attempt was made. Yeah, sorry. Yes. But hey. um, these are both quite strange films, but now that they're shown that they're into into they weird stuff, into this stuff, I think it's okay. It's fine. We'll, we, yeah, it. we'll go for it. Yeah. Anyway, so all this is all this is actually is pretty ice breaking. Ice breaking. The ice is cracking under us. Uh, the um, yeah. We're um, I wanted to talk about your because this was all you. I do not take credit for any of the arrangements or planning to make um, to make this happen. But you came up with a way for us to not only get our kids out to see a film Mm -hmm. in the theater, Mm -hmm. but also to try to uh, make this a community building thing with other people who are still being, I guess you would say COVID cautious or COVID realists or something like that. I call it COVID safer. Just COVID safer. Yeah. Because I, I I don't ever want to mislead someone to thinking that it's completely safe. It's completely safe. We can't guarantee that. I cannot guarantee that. Anymore. That was so, another film. Safety not guaranteed. Yeah, we're not going to, <laughs> that one had a lot of problems. Oh lord. Uh, we'll talk about anyway, that another time. Anyway, that's another time. Yeah. The uh, so this was AMC movie theaters has a thing where they will rent you one theater, um, usually like at an off time, like when they don't have a lot of traffic. Off peak. Off peak. Yeah. Uh, for like hundred bucks, like ninety nine dollars. And that piqued my interest initially because that's actually less than what it costs for us to take all nine of us to the theater. The, um, so, all right, I'm interested. And you get 20 seats for $99 in a private theater. It, it is a, an actual theater. It's just one of the smaller theaters. It's not the, it's not IMAX. <laughs> not, no, no, it's not the IMAX. You can't rent the IMAX for a hundred bucks. Yeah. AMC. It's a smaller theater. Um, and you can bring up to 20 people. Up to 20 people. For the fixed price. For pre, the fixed price. Pre, pre-fix. Pre-fix. Yeah. Um, so, I secured the theater because of one of our children um, was really <laughs> excited. Because had a very strong preference. <laughs> really excited to see the Barbie movie when it came out at the theater. Right. We'd already promised to get it when it was on DVD so we could watch it for a movie night. Yeah. But um, seeing it at the theater was hugely important to this child. So um, I endeavored to see if we could make it happen. And when I found this option, and also I was looking at, the reason it came across my radar even was a lot of COVID cautious people um, have been talking about AMC theaters because they've actually changed their ventilation Mm -hmm. so that they're um, using MERV 13 filters to ventilate and get CO2 relatively low. Yeah. So the did anyone have an like an Aeronet in 
What, uh, the showing yeah. we saw? Well, yes, someone brought we an don't Aaron. Own, we don't own one. Someone, two, we don't own one. an Aaron, but someone brought one, and it was like outside of there. It was nice. It, yeah, it was pretty okay. good. Um, so I was impressed with that. But so the price, the ventilation, private theater, off peak, I figured we could mask up and risk it. And yeah, what, the, just to just to emphasize, the cost of twenty tickets to Barbie on opening weekend. Would have been a lot. Would have been a lot so more than much. we spent. Right? So much more so than we spent. It sounds like a oh, hundred bucks. That's pretty. That's a lot. Well, so, not really. Not really. Not, that's like four tickets. For, really, that's like four tickets. Yeah. Maybe five if you're. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know how if you much get a, tickets cost now. I have but, no idea, but I think they're like eighteen, nineteen dollars a piece. So yeah. it's like five tickets. Right. Um, but that doesn't include tax. Right. So I'm really thinking like right. it's four tickets including tax and everything else. Yeah. Um. This, because I have all these fees, it's kind of like going to ticket. It's like Ticketmaster. It's now. all these damn yeah. fees. Um, but this was straight up. It was ninety nine bucks, six bucks in tax. Yeah. It was it was really modest price for what we got. Right. And so it was. We decided we were going to take three of our children for two reasons. Number one, <laughs> the biggest. Actually, the biggest reason, only three of them wanted to see it. Okay. Several of the kids were kind of like indifferent to seeing this particular movie. Yeah, and the second reason she can understand <laughs> right? And um, the the second reason is we only have like three seats in our car that's running right now. Right. Like <laughs> we got one. We got one car that's sitting dead, waiting for several thousand dollars to come along. Come along and, and so fix we it. Can fix it. Um, and that one holds all of us. But this the, the element car, only holds four. Only holds four people. And one of us has to drive. Yeah. So it was going to be one parent and three children yeah. and. The serendipity was that there were only three children who were like, yeah, I want to go see. Really excited. And yeah. um, one child, however, made a bet, uh, basically like or, or an agreement. I'll see the Barbie movie if you promise to watch a movie of my favorites, one of my favorite movies. Okay. And uh, he was <clears throat> willing to go and got himself ready to go. So he's kind of doing the same thing that I've done with the kids. Right? Yes. Like if you, if you uh, I will show you, I will get, you know... Um, Ant Man three. If if you'll watch Asteroid City, you know. Right. <laughs> if you'll watch my my uh, art, film. art film, I'll watch your whatever film. Yeah. Um, and so yes, uh, one of the children made that agreement and was ready to deliver on his agreement that morning. But I explained that he was not actually required to go to the theater, and if he wasn't excited to see this movie, he didn't need to be in the car. And I promised him that he would absolutely be able to see it on DVD and satisfy the terms of the agreement that he made. Um, he's very, uh, what's the word? Um, stickler. Bel stickler. Belt yeah. and suspender stickler kind of guy. Yeah, legalist. Yeah. Like, uh, legalist. Well, you said 403. Yeah. It's 404 and you're not here. Right. I think we're going to have to, you know, discuss this. <laughs> Pistols at dawn. <laughs> this is all, hey, it's been dawn for five minutes. So, yeah, he's that kind of guy. Yeah. Um, great kid. Great yeah. kid. So, between all those mitigations, um, it was pretty good. And given that there were only four of us, I opened it up. I asked a couple of friends, and a few people weren't available, and this and that. So we still had like 10 Jeez. plus uh, yeah. available. And so I opened it up to a uh, our local COVID conscious group. And then we have a few. People are really scattered and haven't found each other yet. This is, be honest. this is the frustrating thing. We've actually been trying to organize, do a little community organizing uh, you know, actually literally creating small, low-key, intentional communities just right. of people who are are exercising the same kind of... Caution. Even the same order of magnitude of, of, caution. of right. caution that that we are. Mm -hmm. And um, for, for years. For years. And it's always years. been <laughs> almost impossible to get anything going. The only thing successfully that we've really done before this... Well, no, we have had people over for bonfires. We've done right? some bonfires, and they were good. And that was yeah. great, outdoor bonfires. And then we also have had um, a couple of hikes, mm -hmm. but one of them was not so good because we all got infected. We, all got, we got COVID. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we were trying to do this, and, and just simply the people are not engaged in precaution to the level that we are. Yes. And... That's a good conversation for another time. Yeah. Uh, and we, well, you know, just listen to any of our previous three years of episodes. Episodes, <laughs> right? If you want to hear about that. If you want to hear about that. Um, yeah. And that, that was actually 
Only last year when yes. that, that yeah. event. But yes, yeah, so we tried to organize some things. We tried to organize hikes and sort of outdoor things to have consistent uh, social life. Um, but a lot of people really aren't that committed to being safe. And wow. And only just now, someone's like moving a table. I don't know what they're doing upstairs. But uh, I've only just now. It's this sort of dichotomy, dichotomy. A lot of people initially were like, wow, COVID, terrible. Uh, let's stay safe. And then that wore off. At some point. It's because it was, I, I think it's because it was driven out of this like sense of fear. Oh, and right. you cannot sustain a sense of fear. No. And it all it always wears off eventually. It absolutely wears off. But and- my reaction to this thing mostly was not any really abrupt fear. It was like, it was like, more intellectual than that it was like well let's look at the historical parallels and the and analyze what the likely outcomes of this are and the likely arcs of this pandemic and let's actually look at data as close to raw papers or raw excel spreadsheets you know that we can like every day practically i mean watching the 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 hopkins stuff every day um and it wasn't really I, i never felt like a sense of fear exactly. exactly i felt a sense of foreboding it's like oh this is really gonna fuck things up and sadness and and worry you know worry. yeah but yeah. it wasn't like panic or terror when people always say when they're criticizing the cautious people who are being cautious they say oh you can't live in fear you know I'm like i don't i don't actually I don't. <laughs> Or well, someone said that you know, I take calculated risks. You, you know. try to take prepared, not scared, right? Yeah. And yeah. Um, so yes, yes, it, it's a matter of being prepared. And a lot of people, um, many many people, don't have that approach. Number one, yeah. and number two, um, I think a lot of people, as soon as they felt safe, yes, they dropped precautions. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's also true that for many people, that for whom the risk of COVID is very high. Yeah. Knowing this, they've basically sheltered in place for three years plus. And not not found any and not safe found anything to do. Safe thing to do, right? Yeah. I mean such as they are. I mean like yeah. I, I think there's this reality that things were much safer in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. Yeah. And became less safe progressively to the point where we are now. Right. Where there are really no mitigations to speak of. And we are despite the almost complete abandonment of testing and reporting we're actually in a surge now in a surge right now it's it's going to be bad but Without you won't mitigation. hear about it you won't mostly. hear about it right yeah um so that that kind of covid caution that we're exercising and looking for other people to exercise alongside us yeah those people haven't come out of the woodwork until now when basically their families have all abandoned them their friends who've been cautious have all abandoned them <sighs> right. and they have no social life right Unless they reach out to other people, wherever they are, wherever and, they are, find an intentional community as opposed to the community they they already had. They already had, and the I think the really hard reality of that is, for many folks, it, it's I, we're not going into stores. No. So I'm not running into these folks, and they're not going to stores. We're not we running don't into see each other in public. Right. We don't see each other in public. We're not finding each other organically. Yeah. And so they're you've got to kind of weed your way through some fair, fairly cumbersome online interfaces right. to find and, each other. And the social media sites are actually doing their best to censor... Censor and silo people? And silo mm-hmm. people who are who are criticizing the dominant narrative, the, the Washington Post narrative about, about COVID. Right. It's over! Right. Buy yeah. your tissues. Yeah. Summer surge is on its way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, all the billionaires are behind that and this is why actually they're in the process of of strangling um twitter yes um which is actually uh, it may not seem like it to an outsider but from the inside you see an enormous amount of of grassroots community building happening on on twitter Twitter. twitter's where that stuff's happening yeah and people don't get it like just the way they don't get that Suddenly, that at some point, Twitter had largely replaced journalism. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. And I'm not saying that's good. No. 
Uh, that, but that, know, but that I think is, that's what was happening. That's what was happening. Right. And so, journal. And when I say, when you say journalism, when I say journalism, I mean I, local reporting. Yeah, I, I think yeah. we're talking grassroots about local reporting. grassroots local and, reporting. And also any independent left wing voices. Right. Yeah. I'm not talking about the New York Times. No, of course not. The New York Times has never been the place to find information. Right. It has always been a propaganda tool. The place to find what the elites want to spin things right. into. And. That that's distinct from the New York Times as a um, as understood to be the paper of record or as understood to be shared epistemology yeah. epistemology for the American populace. Yeah. Different conversation. But you want to actually know what's happening. Um, that's never been the New York Times. It's always been local journalism that does that. People really will. I don't know. I I regret not being actually even more cautious. Because I have long COVID, right? yes, and I have to live with the consequences of this every day, and not a day goes by that I don't feel these debilitating symptoms, yeah. and that have affected my ability to to drive, to work, to walk, um, you know, to garden, to do any number of ordinary, yeah, truly I, ordinary things, um, and it's affected my senses. My hearing is all effed up you know yes. like uh have tinnitus and hyperacusis and like can't tolerate sound you yes know, all kinds of issues and and I, I so many times reflect on our exposure yeah and i'm just i'm really angry because it was we 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 were, were trying to to give uh, One of the our kids, yeah. a, a nice experience of being able to have a moment of normality, of normal socializing, even though masked. Right, so this was masked and outdoors. Yeah, even and, though masked with another kid. And it turned out that other kid was in attending public schools and who had dropped all precautions, where they had dropped all precautions and was infected. And, and so we brought, uh, we brought probably an Omicron variant home. Oh, yes. And, and that... Um, and so when I feel disappointed that I didn't do more to protect my children, I'm like, what it, should I have done differently? The, it was really actually a moment where he, we were all hiking and we were maintaining a reasonable distance and we were all masked. And the adults were masked obviously better than the children were. Yeah. The children had the masks on, but they fiddle with them and they come loose and they don't fit their faces tightly, you know. Yep. Um, and we let the kids stop and play on a little play structure for a yes. few minutes. And the play structure had these, you know, um, what do they call that? Like, like those tubes, you slide those those tube slides. Tube slides, like spiral like tube a, yeah. that you slide down. And like a little thing that you can climb through, little tunnels, mm -hmm. like like a habit, a habit trail. <laughs> right. you know? And uh, honestly, I got to hand it to these kids. They were going through separately. They were being careful yeah. not to get too close to yeah. each other. But they got too close to each other. They got too close to each yeah, other, right? Yeah, someone's mask was loose, and they were, you know, too close. To and these face. were enclosed spaces, so yeah. the air wasn't moving. Yeah. And and that was all it took. But it was probably a relatively low viral load, which is why nobody really got sick. sick. Yeah, none of us actually actually the acute infection. Yeah. None of us got really sick. Yeah, but this, like at all. We think I personally I think that this was actually my third infection. Yeah. It's hard but to document prove. or prove, but yeah. It's hard to document and prove because I have never had a positive PCR. But um, mm -hmm. I did have positive rat one summer. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we did have, you know, our child had a, a series of positive rats after yeah. this exposure. So we yes. know it was in the house. We know it was in the house. And then three, and like clockwork, three months, 12 weeks later. Yeah. So we started having sequel. A never of, a number of us had even a number of us even who had never tested positive at all so had severe of, started having severe post COVID symptoms. Yeah. And so, or post COVID sequelae, pardon me. Sequelae. Yeah. However you put but um uh And so you know, what should we have done differently? And I yeah, believe me, I've analyzed we it. We certainly have beat ourselves up about it. And Really, uh, my big takeaway that's not really about being myself up yeah. is, number one, uh, children do not mask well. 
Yeah. It's hard for them. And really, if you're, like, say, under 10... You're just not that diligent about anything. I mean, you don't clean your butt that well. You don't I, keep, clean your fingernails and hands that well. Right. <laughs> you know, right? And Unless um, you're a very unusual prissy kid. Well, I don't even say prissy, but, you know, some children are fastidious in that way. Fastidious. And some children are not. And, um, I mean, some people are that way, and some right. people are not. Right. But um, most adults who are not fastidious... Yeah are fastidious about things that matter to them. Yes. Right? They can yeah. be. They have the, I'm terrible at being on time, but if I know I've got to make a flight, I can get there. Right. Right? The, um, and in the, but in that same way, you can't really expect that as a society-wide norm... Of children. Of children. No. And, and, and I said 10. I really... It's under 12. It's like we were talking about the toddlers in the movie theater. You can't... You know, some kids can do it or can be trained to do it, but you can't, as a norm, expect toddlers to sit still at a desk for three hours or whatever. No, you know, that's, that's inappropriate. One hour. It's inappropriate to have that expectation. They need recess badly. So, <laughs> so this is like the, they need a nap. It's like they need a nap. They need recess. They need they need movement. Yeah. But in, and in the same way, it's unfair and inappropriate to expect that the burden of blocking transmissions to fall to children. To children. Masking appropriately right. at all times and all encounters. Rather than like the school system for maybe not infecting everyone left and right and repeatedly. And so, for my part, the big takeaways are, number one, children don't mask well. And yeah. to just accept that as reality. Yeah. And to number two, understand that um, what children can do to interact without transmissions doesn't involve, like, a play set. Yeah, yeah. And number three, and this gets into... So I've actually put them in a, a specific order. So number one is this individual action that you can't expect with children. Yeah. Number two is sort of like the transmission setting, right? Yeah. The third thing, and this is actually probably the most important thing, is knowing who the child is you're interacting with. Mm -hmm. This was the first time we had an outing with a child that attended school. Right. Right. right? All the previous outings were pools where transmission is lower. Right. As soon as we mixed a high transmission pool right. with our pool, we had a transmission. So just put, think of it this way. Um, I, the last I heard, I, I forget whether this was in Okinawa or here mm -hmm. um, or like Minnesota or something, but based on wastewater trend, um, data. data somewhere, they're saying the estimate is that one in 90 people are currently infected, have an active acute infection. It seems low, to be honest, but yeah, I um, believe it. But if that's true, and you're going into a store... A grocery store. I'm just... you got to know a little bit about statistics to calculate it, but... Um, very likely there's at least a there's handful. There's a person. There's a handful of people. At least one person that's that Actively shutting virus it's and breathing up. it out. Yes. And, and it behaves like smoke. Yep. Yeah. So, so that air is what the air you're breathing. Yeah. It lingers in the air like cigarette smoke does. Yep. Um, if you can, so if, you, if you're in a place, imagine that someone was smoking in this area and you go there. If, if, if you can imagine still. that you could still smell the cigarette smoke. You could still be inhaling viral. You can still be inhaling viral particles, yeah. and I know it. It frustrates some of the drive-through people that I talk to. Um, most there's only one. There's one guy at CVS really seems angry about me masking yes. at the drive-through. I can't hear you. Yeah, what's going on? And I've taken to just like nice speaking to him and just using my um, communication device that I have on my phone. Yeah, you write on it. I just write on it, type yeah. out what I need, and um, hold it up to the window. Just pretend you can't talk. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. And, uh, but, but no, yes. It really does enrage some people. Some people, people are really mad. Like, they, they take it very personally for some reason. Many of, but yeah, I, I should just put in context. Most of the people I encounter in a business setting. Yeah. They, this is not something they bring up. They don't care. They don't care. They, they're there for the money. That's why they're there. I have the money. They have the product. They give it to me. I give them the money. We, um, and that's the end of it. We have done quite well and kept quite safe doing curbside pickup from GFS. Mm -hmm. Gordon Food Service, the local chain of restaurant supply stores, um, Target, mm -hmm. which will bring stuff out to your car and put it in the back. Put it in the trunk. Contact free pickup still. Mm -hmm. And um, Meyer will do the same thing. Meyer will do the same. Yeah. Sam's will do the same. Um, Sam's Club will do the same thing. Costco, Costco will, not. will not. So to, Trader Joe's will not. If we need some things that only Costco has, which we do occasionally, um, 
we have to pay for an Instacart driver and participate in that whole exploitation that whole, regime. A little right. shit show. But, and if yeah, and if the um, I, I still don't, I don't feel like this is still. I don't think this changes my use of it or makes our use of it sort of okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, but yes, we there's no compromises. Yes, there's no ethical right consumption, <laughs> consumption under capitalism. capitalism. But also, when when they aren't getting paid as much, I increase the tip to make sure they got like twenty five dollars for an hour of labor. Yes, so we tri- we tip very generously. Um, yeah, but, but, because we can. Because we can, and, yeah. but no, I want to be very clear. I don't think that makes it okay. Doesn't really make it okay, but we're trying to ameliorate. I'm trying to ameliorate as best I can. The... And like we we, I purchased and used slave chocolate for home baking for years. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the slave free chocolate kind of sucked for home baking, and I don't think that made it okay for me to buy slave no. chocolate. No. Um, and we worked on this until I found a good source of slave free chocolate. The the source of chocolate that that we have settled on, which we bulk order a couple times a year now, mm-hmm. bars and cocoa powder, because mm-hmm. it's also it's very, very good, is yeah. um, Guitard, Guitard, G-U-I-T-T-A-R-D. Yes, of Northern California. And um, Order in the cold yeah, you, months? <laughs> yeah, order in the cold months or you have to pay an enormous uh, surcharge for them to pack it with cold packs. It's $125. It's a lot. Just so, for the shipping. Because in warm months, yeah. they... They don't Fly want it. They don't want it to arrive. <laughs> yeah, they don't want it to arrive melted because you melted be and pissed pumped. and try to return it. And try to return it. So they don't even do it. They yeah. don't. They'll only send it one way during yeah. warm months. Full stop. Yeah. Um, it's a more typical shipping fee. Right. Of a, it, for it, typical. It really. Um, they are not actually really mm-hmm. set up for direct sales to to consumers. No, not really. It's a B two B. You know, they sell. Yes. They sell a. To businesses, right? They've got restaurants. They've got deals with like King Arthur Flour for some of their chocolate right. powders and other right. things. They've got so they've got business to business thing where they yeah. get it to other. They're so, basically a wholesaler. Yeah. So, but like in November through March, April, April. April yeah. um, if you want to order, get a get a case. Get you know, case. get a get twelve boxes of bars of their something seventy something. It's like sixty seven percent of chocolate. And that's a great eating bar for my it's really taste. Really good. Yeah. Um, many people would consider it dark chocolate and wouldn't enjoy the flavor. I yeah. enjoy the flavor at sixty seven percent as a just as an eating bar. They also get a case of their red cocoa powder. It's it's super the best I've ever tasted. Really good. Hands down. Yeah. And really you know, the best. We don't actually supervise their harvesting. We can't entirely vouch for the claims that it's, you know, cruelty free, slave free, oh, exploitation free. Right. We can't really. We can't we personally can only, vouch for that claim. We can only go by the information that we can find. You right. Know. Which, and broadly, broadly, these organizations that certify slave free, slave free. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard any scandals yet. No, so but but you've got a, it is a an industry consortium watching the industry, and so you've always got to wonder well, just how. Some of them are. Some of the yeah. some of the things are like um, organic is is a yeah. is an industry consortium, yeah. but the slave free are actually third party verifications. Okay, so uh, it's and a third party verification is as good as it gets to find slave free. It's about it's products, as good as you can find as yeah. you can find to right. buy slave free products that are right. really just. Not yeah. within your scope to go and look yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, but all this, all this is to say, um, many of these things around shopping, around how we're going to, tr- going to try and navigate the pandemic, they're becoming increasingly imperfect. That's not what I want. I mean, I don't want a community yeah. of people. Right. I mean, one person drove an hour to sit, watch this movie. That's she's coming down from the Toledo border, right? That, that's. I'm very appreciative of her efforts. It's, yes. I think it's terrific, but, but God, yeah, it shouldn't have to be this way. It shouldn't have to be this way. Right. It shouldn't have to be this way. So, um, for so many reasons, right? Yeah. Um, there are probably people there who need community. There's probably businesses there that need the money. There's probably, I mean, we can go on all day about how it ought to be. We should say also what we tried to do to, okay, so the the... The other thing is we wanted everyone masked in the theater and we yes. wanted people to sit in groups with plenty of space. With space and distance. Right. Um, so you didn't have a case where two people weren't masking very well, sitting next to each other, chatting 
from different households and wind up infecting each exactly. other despite the ventilation right. and all because that actually can happen that can know? happen it's that not... can happen and we had one person who yeah. came yeah. who was not who was basically the friend of a friend right and the friend did not communicate well the standards that person like had a drink and some stuff we had they to, like, got stuff from the concessions and hooked their mask off to, to, to like we had to like eat. go back and forth about that it was, it was, yeah. it was kind of ridiculous a pain in the butt um, um but the Air was filtered, ventilated, and mm. low CO two concentration. Yeah. Every single other person was masked yeah. with an N ninety five. Right. So the odds better. the odds that this person either was infected or infected anyone are are pretty low. Mm -hmm. But still, it would have been nice to follow the to follow, actual actually guidelines. follow the guidelines. And the um, what what is it? On all the under twelves had a personal one to one handler to help them manage their mask. That's so good. they stayed masked well. Yeah. And. Um, the other thing yeah. was, except for the friend of a friend, yeah. we know who these pools of people are. Because right. this is like one in 90 is the general population. Right. I don't think the number is that high amongst all adults that work from home. No. Right? No. So right. all right. work from home adults, that's not the same number. Of course number. not. Well, right? and this is, I, you know, like I said, I didn't bring notes today. I didn't, but I just remember seeing this recent number yeah because people who are tracking wastewater are pointing out how this num the the numbers are going up exponentially they're going up exponentially and actually the low numbers the, yeah. these sort of low wastewater numbers yeah. are are the peaks from previous waves right so it's um it's looking i mean i know you don't see it no one sees no it. one sees it because right? deaths are lower because deaths are a lot lower but it's really looking bad right now for a big surge yes and um and it, the the way it will manifest this time is not a huge number of hospitalizations. It is actually a startling number of people that you know dropping dead. Just dropping dead from a heart attack, stroke. Heart attack, stroke. Car uh, accident. Ischemic event. A car accident. Car accident. Yeah, like... Um, they, have a uh, they have a very minor stroke. Uh, Who's control of the car? The, the pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism. Um, Some, like... And really, like your 35-year-old friend, your 29-year-old friend, yeah. your 42-year-old friend, like has some massive heart attack with yeah. no family history or record of and, trouble. Yeah. Um, until you... I don't wish long COVID on anyone. No. But it's like, until it happens to you, you are unlikely to actually have done much reading about just how serious this virus can damage your body. Or, or to really comprehend the magnitude of damage. Right, right. 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 And because you don't feel it. You don't feel it. It's not... You don't feel it while it's happening. No. Um, this is all happening in places in your body that don't have nerve endings. They have no nerve endings. Right? Yes. Including your brain. <laughs> so oh, that's the fun part. If you value that thing or need it... Um, protect it. Protect it. So... So, yeah. The, the, um, I, want to, I want to mention the treat. You should, oh, yeah. The, the treat. <laughs> so, the reason the treat. People couldn't... <laughs> Um, we, we didn't want people to buy snacks. We weren't trying to rob the concession stand of their yeah. money, but we didn't want people eating in the theater so, right. just because of the mask issue. So um, we got everyone a little goodie bag. A everyone goodie bag. who showed up, we got them a little goodie bag. We bought pre-packaged little bags of popcorn and theater candy and yeah. distributed them in, in little paper uh, paper bags, paper lunch sacks. So paper lunch sacks after, yeah. the, after the movie. And... You know, a good time was had by all. No yeah. one's gotten sick. No one's reported. No one's reported illness yeah. of any kind. I've actually I've checked in with everyone. You've been checking. I've been checking with people. No well, one. No one's is... reported illness. Right. And right. and everyone had a blast. So uh, so those the big things where we had the children's masks managed. Mm -hmm. We made sure mostly for all, you know one out of the twenty people. Um, the other nineteen were from specific pools where virus is likely to be low circulation. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so we imagine... Oh, oh, and we were distanced within the theater with all the other mitigations on top of it. So we weren't necessarily like re -breathing. There was no... Um, we lowered the risk of near-field transmission. That's what it is when you distance people. Because, yeah. yeah, this idea people have, like, well, we were, we were in the restaurant, but we were distanced. We were in the grocery store, but we were distanced. Like smoke. It's if like you smoke. You smell it, you're inhaling Right. Um, yeah. But... And, if you have an active case, mm -hmm. 
um, near field transition, even with other mitigation, is a big deal indoors mm -hmm. and outdoors. Yes. Where if they would say within, say, like. People are, people are going to outdoor concerts. Yes. And getting infected. Uh, yes. When you see, yes. uh, especially uh, at night, you have like an inversion effect and where where you have stagnant air that it's there's not a breeze you right. have like uh in the evening you wind up with a heat dome or this inversion right. layer where the air just kind of hangs if it feels stagnant if it feels um a humidity the, yeah very um what's the word not climate. stuffy stuffy clammy. Um, clammy humid um and there's no breeze and you're in an outdoor theater set, concert setting. Like, yeah. And oftentimes these little stadiums are shaped like bowls or like whatnot. A bowl. All that air is not moving. It is not and moving. And anyone, it's anyone who's uh, who's venting viral particles, they will just drift around. They just, they'll just pull there. In that bowl and very, very likely to be transmission. And I got to say that this is an important point about transmission yeah. because we have this thing and really... I fell into this trap where we did get infected, of feeling like the outdoors offered was effectively magical protection, right? Yeah. That yeah. because you're outside, I think there the won't hiking be a part was the hiking part with the mass. It would have been um, where all the adults were hiking outdoors with mm -hmm. a, you know light breeze, a snowy day. You yeah. Know. Uh, the the odds of the adults infecting each other would have been very very low. Very low. I mean it. Possible. I'm not going to say it's not possible. And, and what actually did happen was a near field transmission. Right. Where suddenly it they were closer. In a, they were closer and in a more enclosed space. But you, people let the fact of being out of doors, they treat it like magic. And I. And it's, it's not. It's really. It's a matter of physics. And I feel my regret is that you know I did watch the kids while they were on the play structure, and I'm like. Oh, they're getting a little close, and I noticed this kid's mask is slipping a bit, and it's like, should I? Same but they man. were having such a good time, and literally, yeah. our son had not been able to play in person with another kid for years. So I just could not bring myself to say to interrupt to, their to, play to to stop and say, because we were only giving them a few minutes because we we're all waiting while they played right. on the play outside in January. <laughs> right, so we were all getting cold. We didn't want to wait too long, but I like. No, I'm not going to cut this off and say, hey, you know, safety police, back away. Back away. Beep, beep. But, but it's, you're, you're right. We didn't know that this child, we didn't know who this child was. We didn't know right. this child was in public school. Yes, until later. Until later. Yes. yes. So you've got to be very careful about and then, that kind of thing. And then we heard that the, the child had tested positive, too. Yes, you know? yes. But that, that was later. Like, yeah. she had emailed, when I went to email her... That my son had tested positive. The mother. The mother. Yeah. Um, when let's be very clear, when I say we had almost, we really wasn't that bad. The only symptom he had was a mild My headache. headache. Yeah. So not like a migraine. He was just like, hey, you know, I've got a, I think I have a headache. It's Mom. not. Um, no temperature. It's no nothing. It's, it's just a mild headache. It's actually very unusual for a healthy child. To report a headache. To report a headache. And so I noticed, and I tested, and he was positive. Yeah. When I went to email her, she had already emailed me yeah. that she tested positive. So the most common symptom of any virus you see in a healthy child is, is a fever. It's Oftentimes a fever. it barely slows them down. Many times, yes. So um, so those lessons we took to this event, and, it, you know, God willing, everyone seems to have come out of it fine. Yeah. Um, where, Here I am looking at my toes. And it's a year and a half later, over a year and a half later. Yeah. And my toes are still purple, and my feet still burn and feel funny, and my hands still burn and feel funny all day, every day. And mm -hmm. my doctor has looked at this, and he doesn't know what's up, and I know what's up now, which is, I mean, I've been tested for my blood sugars, you know, all that diabetes. Um, this is a... Uh, this is a, a type of dysautomnia, where yes. my system is not um, circulating the blood as readily as it should be. Mm -hmm. And we believe now that some of the, what people call brain fog, well, some is actual brain damage. Actual um, brain damage. But some of it also is, you, you can, like, on your finger, maybe your oxygen reading is fine. 
but your heart may not be circulating enough oxygen mm -hmm. to fully oxygenate your brain all day, you know? Oh, shit. And so... <laughs> That's such bad news, right? <laughs> well, it reminds me, um, there was a thing that used to happen to me in high school where mm -hmm. we had some classrooms, certain classrooms that were a little bit overcrowded, a, little, a few too many kids in them, and um, they were... They had no windows and um, no good ventilation. And when we'd have these certain classes, everyone in the class would be falling asleep, and oh, half of us, and a, half of us, would be reporting a headache. Yes. And it was because the CO two in the room had gone through no, the roof. Yeah, CO two had gone through the roof. Um, we were running, literally running out of oxygen. Running out of oxygen, right? And um, and it just always happened during this certain right. class in this certain classroom. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I wish these windows were openable, but they weren't. They weren't. Yeah. No. And, and right. I've got to say, the... It's the same thing. Indoor yeah. air quality thing that a lot of people are harping on now because of COVID. Yeah. This has been real for 20 years where we've had all the data that we need to improve air quality inside schools. Well, it's certainly not for the reasons conducive described. for learning. Right? No, it's it's causes direct harm to learning. Right? Direct harm and, and, you know, I mean, it's not going to give you permanent brain damage to, to be like, well, okay, it would be very slight to, right. for one incident of like having to spend an hour in an overcrowded room, right? But Oh, um, right, right. But this but, is something people are doing 180 but days a year. But it's chronic. It's yeah, chronic. Yeah. You're doing 180 and, days a year. And that can't be good for anyone. No. <laughs> and it's not, you know, it's not for, yeah. It's not just because the teacher was boring that people no, were passing out. No, it's not just because it was after lunch. It's not because right. the teacher was boring. They actually were not getting enough oxygen. Right, and were dozing off and barely keeping their heads. And then I would wind up with a... a Blinding a headache. headache. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Where were we? We were... I, I was talking about... We're going to wind up. Um, yeah. We've turned this from a, like a, 20, a tight 20 um, discussion... To a long rambling discussion involving film reviews, <laughs> but, film reviews, COVID, but I wanted to, you I wanted to, to loosen it up um, yeah. to make it more of a, a a conversation to to talk about to bring in all the things this is linked to in our lives. Yeah. But I, th okay. So I'll ask a couple quick follow ups, and we'll, we'll end up here. Do you? Um, Oh, do you want to spend maybe a minute and talk about the Barbie movie since we were? Oh gosh, yeah. We were offering. I, I will reviews. say, I'll offer this about the Barbie movie. You got time? Yes. Okay. I'll offer this. Um, it is good, but not great. Yeah. And in in the way that, um, and so it's disappointing because I think, given the subject material, this could have been a great movie. Yeah, this really could have yeah. been a great movie. Uh, Barbie's an icon. She yeah. really is. And um, greatness was there. Right. But this movie's only good. Right. So there's a way in which it's, it's a real disappointment that a, a movie that could have been great is only just, it's good. It's My nice. impression of from reading reviews, I haven't actually seen it. Um, I will at some point because we'll get a DVD. But, you know, is that um, it had an opportunity to make a really entertaining and powerful feminist critique. Right? Oh, yes. But they didn't really seize it. But the actual way they presented everything was so overstuffed and muddled yeah. that this gets kind of left by the wayside. That the the you know, the simplicity of like the focus was lost. Was lost, right? Yeah, yeah. And and for my part, I think they could have done two things. And I will tell you what they actually did. Okay. I think they could have done something like a Barbie version of the Transformers live action movie. Yeah. They have Barbie, and it's a live action Barbie movie, and it's just Barbie running around being Barbie. And they've had, there are other kids' movies like this that are animated. They could have done a live action version of that. And you know what? Yeah. We could have had a blast. Yeah. It would have been fun. Yeah. Um, they could have also done something where they had a, a better understanding of what they were trying to do themselves. Yeah, and it because was written by one person and not a committee, <laughs> written by one person and not a committee, and <laughs> done something more like the Lego Movie, which was really kind of an art film, kind of a kids film. The Lego Movie, was, kind of a political commentary. We went to see the Lego Movie, the first one, having quite low expectations. It was a matinee at a local theater in Saginaw, mm -hmm. 
and we took the kids and we came out of it going, wow, wow. that was great. It was really, and, and so they could have done that. They, yeah. And it, yeah. But what they actually did, I don't know if anybody remembers, um, really, it, it's kind of a throwaway movie, but I had a good time, it was A Fish Called Wanda. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what they actually did was more like A Fish Called Wanda, where they've got some contrived plot, it's, it's and a, then they just move through... It's a series of comedy, comedy right. sketches. Then they just move through a series characters. of sketches and jokes yeah. and characters yeah. um, as they move through this contrived plot. That reminds me that the oldest kids are old enough to see A Fish Called, called Wanda. Wanda. So it's... A, so it's it was fun. You know, I enjoyed A Fish Called Wanda. I had a good time. And yeah. A Fish Called Wanda did not... Um, there was no reason to expect it to be anything other than a fun string of comedy sketches. It's, it's actually kind of a, a Monty Python cinematic universe thing, right? Yes. So, so and, and there's no reason to expect or be planning on anything other than a good time and a string of jokes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it actually ended up being. And some of these are punchy... Um, feminist uh, political commentary jokes yeah. but it, you know it's just a string of jokes yeah. you know yeah. and so that's it great it doesn't add up to enough it doesn't add up to enough yeah. and if it's a fish called Wanda yeah. you're not expecting anything more than that no and it's fine but if it's like this is the Barbie movie right. and we're gonna do a thing it's a kind of a letdown thing and capitalization right it's kind of a th it's kind of a letdown that's what I've heard but um, oh but here's I just want to point out Apparently, there, there's now going to be like a goddamn Mattel toy cinematic universe. And they're planning, oh, God, fuck me. They're planning. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, they're planning a number of films oh, in this. Dude. This was just the opening this salvo. Just, oh. There's including, oh. they're going to be included. This is moaning. Including, um, <laughs> including Barney. Yes, uh, the look of horror I can't even capture, I can't even describe, I shouldn't be. A live-action Barney movie? Okay. Whatever. Whatever. All right, whatever. whatever. Anyway, sure. but, so, there'll be lots of movies to make fun of in the forthcoming years, but I, but really we should, at some point, talk about just how bad, how, how, how bad films are getting, and this push towards... With the writer strike and the push towards AI and the push towards the endless stream of streaming content that's no longer doesn't, earns anything for the people that participated in it. Yeah, it's it's is, it's a whole that's a whole another big. It's topic. a whole problem. Yeah, but keep narrowing that in scope. Um, this was we picked this film because it was a big. This is probably the heaviest marketing marketed film I've ever heard of or seen. You International know, was, shortage of pink paint. It was. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was everywhere, and uh, like, and I'm not even anywhere. And it was. And you saw it, right? Uh, right. It's all in your face. Uh, everywhere in my face, and um, so yeah, we can expect this sort of thing to where basically they spend as much on marketing as they do on the film, and and you know barely recoup their expense, and then call it a huge loss, which That's means loss, they don't have yeah. to pay anyone. No one needs to get paid. Sorry about right. those residuals, though. Right. Um, yeah, sucks to be you. Hollywood accounting, um, but uh, yeah, it's I'm not too excited about that. But um, but everyone was excited to come see it, even if they would not have normally chosen. We bought the tickets before the strike. I just want to be very clear. About oh, that. that's right, that's right. We did. Well, that's a good point because I was going to say I probably say, would have bought it after the strike. Okay. I was going to say. So, do you? Is the plan to do this like once a month now with the same community? Can you get enthusiasm for another one? You want to try quarterly or what? we could totally get enthusiasm for another one. This was yeah. huge for a lot of people. Yeah, it was really huge, it and I've got people texting me now who want to like get together and do stuff. Right? Um, so, so this may have been the, the we hope this is the opening event to actual some community get together. Actual community get together, an, an actual sort of like stable community where yeah. you could find. Conceivably, and have you can get to know, a pod. Get to know the people. Right. These people you get to know and you really, you know, decide to stick yeah. this up together. Yeah. Um, so there's interest. There's definitely interest. We probably would go monthly. Yeah. There's a couple of things. I don't really want to put money into Hollywood movies during a strike. It's... I'm not feeling good about that. That's the thing. I'm not feeling good about it. It would be... Um, I, I guess maybe I would be looking into these... Um, these, well, 
Hundred percent. That's the thing. They only want to do this in the off peak hours for the films they've already rented. Oh yes, but let me let me finish this this yeah. answer. Yeah. So there's interest. I don't really want to give money to Hollywood movies, and AMC Theater has run out of public health emergency money, and so doesn't want to buy the upgraded filters anymore. So oh. basically, upgrading their ventilation in this way was, was free. It was free to them. And now that it's not free, they're like, yeah, why bother? Wow. Okay. So it that's seems like that's going away. It's unclear when. Wow. So that's really kind of a, a gut punch, to be honest. Like, you guys are providing this great physical yeah. environment. Right. Um, you could actually just keep doing that. I mean, we would even pay more than we did. Uh, yes, mostly. yes. Not a, not you know, ten times more. <laughs> right, not ten times more. more. So what this amounts to is I did look into yeah. a small local theater in yeah. Clinton. Yeah. No one goes there. Yeah. There's, uh, in, in fairness, it's it's run by a nonprofit so they can keep their theater open. So this would be second run. This would be second run. It'd be whatever they have access or, to in their catalog. Or, or old films. Or even old films. Exactly. Well, that's the thing. If you want to avoid um, stepping on people's toes who are supporting the strike, there's yeah. still not a huge there's back a catalog of films out there. There's a huge catalog of films you can you watch. Don't have to, there's decades of films. You don't, you don't have to only see whatever Marvel is shooting right. out this month. You don't need to quit your film habit cold turkey. Right. You really don't. Right. Um, and in fact, almost everything we watch is is old. Is old. Yeah. I mean, going back to the nineteen thirties. Yeah. Right? Some stuff from the thirties. Yeah. So um, I'm exploring if this theater would be willing to. Explore improving their ventilation, mm -hmm. and the co because the costs. And I was actually talking about this a friend of mine on the phone. That okay, so there's filters that people typically use, and those are like five dollars a filter. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Merv thirteen filters that actually catch viruses. They actually catch viruses of bacteria. Yeah. Um, mo really nearly all viruses and bacteria that humans normally encounter. Yeah. Um, there are some that exist that are smaller, but not many that we would encounter. Um, this is not, I should just point out, um, this wildfire smoke is not stopping. That's not going away, no. And People are like, it's better. It's wa waxing and waning. It's waxing and waning. But that's but, because the wind is blowing differently, right, literally. Right, but the fires are still going yes. uh, without containment in, in Canada. And also, I think it'll probably die down in the fall and over the winter, but you can expect this next you, year. You can expect more fires next year. Every year. Um, yeah. So... The the filters that because you can also use those filters to filter wildfire smoke. It's we're just wearing an N95 helps a lot. Helps helps a lot significantly. Smoke. And you actually see it dirty. So you see it dirty at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, so the the filters that they switch to are Merv 13 filters, and those are like twenty five dollars a filter. They're, they're five times as expensive as a typical yeah. furnace or air cleaning filter, right? right? And and that's what, and that's the difference in HEPA or HEPA filtration. It's that it's really five times the cost to get HEPA filtration. Now, mind you, we got to be honest. I'm talking the cost retail for, say, a homeowner. Yeah, yeah. You know, AMC theaters. I'm sure could get a sweetheart deal where they're not paying significantly right. more. Right. When they purchase at scale directly from 3M, for example. Yeah. Um, but because it was free to do so. They just did it. And now that there's any cost associated at all, yeah. they're, they're just going back to what they've always done. So it's a bit, it's a real <laughs> shame. Yeah. But the truth is, it would cost them, it would cost them something to do something. Yeah. I'm wondering, and so what I'm taking that perspective into the conversation with this small theater. Yeah. That, yes, I understand this will cost you something to do this. And um, maybe, maybe what we do is we bring a bank of CR boxes for our showings. And that's yeah. what they could agree to. Yeah. Um, but really, I'd like to. Just... <laughs> like an army of small army of people walking in with this line of these big cubes. <laughs> right, just ridiculous. But you know, I, I think that's where we are. That's, you just embrace that. Well, whatever it is, embrace it. Move it's on. so little support that it really is. We are in a DIY pandemic. To do do it. Do you want DIY? And I've always loved DIY, but not like this. Not like not, not like this. No. You have to. You're forced to to keep yourself at a minimal level of, of safety. safety. Yeah, just a modicum of safety. Every day. Like I, 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 I really don't want to get to the point where we have to pump out the septic tank. I don't want to get personally. To, like personally, that's not. 
Uh, you've no. got, you use a siphon, you got to suck on it. Suck and it put it, it going. <laughs> but that feels like the direction society is taking. Yeah. If I'm yeah. honest with you, right? Yeah. But, uh, so, yes, I hope to do more. I'm exploring a way to make it as safe, if not safer, and a theater that will consistently provide ventilated air. Okay. But it doesn't... That's the thing. I mean, ultimately, by doing this, they're getting some money from a theater which is sitting empty at 9.30 a.m. on a Sunday. Exactly. No right. one's there anyway, so... Right. Everyone's at church. No. <laughs> anyway. I'm talking about Americans, Paul. Yeah, okay. But but no, they're, it's like they're, they have this... They have access to this film during this... however many weeks they right. license it for the digital screenings. And, and honestly... <laughs> they can get more butts and seats. They can get more butts and seats by doing this. It's weird. Yeah. It's wild. Because, yeah. you know, maybe they aren't experiencing any drop. Because everyone's cheering about how the Barbie movie is, like, clear sign the pandemic's over because people mm-hmm. filled the theaters. Movie theaters are back, baby. Woo! Until everyone's too sick to show up. Or run them. Yeah. Or run them. Right. That's the other thing. You know, you go to places and folks are like, yeah, the pandemic, we haven't seen any patients here with, the, you know, with COVID. COVID's over. Half the staff's Half out. Half the staff is out with COVID. Yeah. You know, like... So why are you so much Oh, yeah. Uh, all the MPs are out with COVID. Sorry. Yeah. You, had, you had a couple other questions, don't worry. When was the... Uh, we, do we want to do more of these things? And, and are we planning to do more? And um, That's really a shame to hear that, that this... Uh, AMC seems to be rolling that back. Yeah. But I mean, I'm really glad that you're looking around. I, I don't have any more questions. I think we can wind up, but... Um, yeah. We... Uh, yeah, we just... I wanted to p- people to hear... Um, this story and just hear that you know people really are there may be some options for you if you miss going to um theaters to see mm-hmm. films i don't know what you have available to you locally but i mean look into it there okay. may there may be a safe option i'm not going to say how safe i can't guarantee that. there may be a safer option safer there really option. yeah there really might be yeah. i know some there's talk i've heard talk that uh some like line dancing mm-hmm. groups are still masking mm. to, together. I've heard talk that um, like the State Theater or Michigan Theater have yeah. like do a monthly mask required screen. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know what they're showing. Right. Well, yeah, I, don't, honestly, I don't know that. Honestly, sometimes I don't even care because like you haven't seen a movie in so long. It would be fun. My problem with that is that is enforcement. Yeah. Because even doing it myself, I still had to do enforcement personally. Right. 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 And if Michigan theater, I, I, I just I have a hard time really knowing what they're going to do to enforce that policy. Yeah. Honestly, and the cultural shift to safety for the community that happened during polio has not happened. It's maybe we got five percent of the way there, and then it, it was abandoned, and everyone, all libertarians, screamed about lockdowns and losing their freedom for a year. Like okay. lockdowns that never happened in the U.S. Right, right, and um, so we right. we moved the needle five percent, and then lost all that ground, and then, and then some. And now it's it's gone negative. It's actually. gone negative. We're honestly. less safe, and the public, and in the process, they've you know our. Institutions have looked at their public health line items and their budget. It's just like, let's yeah, just delete this. We can get rid of all this. Uh, like, we, what do we need that for? I have dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Somalia. Yay! All right. That's not a joke about Somalia. It's a no, joke about libertarians. That's actually, this was a, a video about... Right. So, so, and it, it was... Libertarian a, paradise. Yeah. No one will, will force you to... To uh, do anything. You, you will can dump your waste wherever you want. Right. But. It was it was a discussion about that how Somalia actually has the regulations that libertarians are asking for, and here's what it looks like. Right, and it was pretty terrifying. Yeah, um, but that's where we're going with public health in the U.S. and Canada. I ju- I heard that um, people now have the freedom to spread tuberculosis, leprosy in oh, Florida, and leprosy in Florida, leprosy and tuberculosis. Yeah, good times. That's, so Don't forget malaria. So great to be here in the land of the free. Anyway, thank you for listening, folks. We could be here all night, but we won't. We, uh... We'll, we'll cut it off here. Yeah, tip your server. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.